From the top of the CBS Interactive Building in San Francisco, it's Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. With your host, Mr. Brian Tom. Ooh. I got it right here. I got it right here. No, you know that's you know what that sound was? That sound Hopefully effect I just play. made? What? Uh-oh. I heard it. Friday the 13th. <laughs> You're scaring me, bro. <laughs> You're scaring me! <laughs> Good Friday 13th. It is episode 36. Ooh. Jason Voorhees not in the house. Um, but do you know what that sound that I just made was from that immediately turned people off to the show? No, what was that? You ever go on Halloween when you're trick-or-treating and you have that little white ghost hanging oh, yeah. from the top of the door that senses your, senses your motion? Yes. And all of a sudden it sets off and goes... <laughs> That's a classic I, I do. Pretty, I do. It's, it's, remember I did that in the meeting and everyone's like, yeah. That's actually really good. <laughs> It's real. It's real good. It's real good. (laughs) All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thanks for coming out to the show. Thanks for listening uh, on all our various platforms. We do stream this live to YouTube, Periscope, live stream, and we will have a new uh, live streaming capability functionality in what? Maybe around the next week or so? Yeah, hopefully next week we're going to be live streaming on Facebook. Uh Uh-oh, you better watch. You're just going to be scrolling and be like, oh, watch your Facebook. Um, But again, this show is all about you. We're just here to... We're stewards of the show, basically. It is the Apple Byte Extra Crunchy All That Munch. You can call us to be a part of this show. The number is 1-800-616-2638. You can leave your name, your number, not your number, your name. <laughs> we get your number, by the way, <laughs> just so you know. Your number shows up in the email. Your so. name, your message, your comment, your bad apple, your good apple. We want to know what you're thinking. What do you want to hear from us? What do you want to talk about? But I really love it when you guys and gals contribute to the show with your own opinions or thoughts. But again, keep it around 30 seconds and we can bounce off each other. I know it's not live calls. We're working on that maybe if you are if you guys are extra nice. It's going to take but another person. It's, it so will it's take another difficult. person. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get there one day. But let's get to the show right now. And the latest news just dropped. And this is a big one. It may not sound the sexiest, but this is big because Apple does not do this. Apple recently just invested $1 billion in Chinese ride-hailing service Didi Chuxing. Is that like how you that? say it? Didi Chu Xing? Chu Chu Xing. Like Chuck Sing? We're not, you, we're you sure know, it's, it's not, not it's not Dai Dai Chuck Sing. <laughs> it's Didi Chu Xing. Cool. So uh they're basically the largest ride hailing service. Uh their competitor is actually China Uber. We know we know about that Uber service. But Apple's invested one billion dollars. They never do this type of stuff in a move that Tim Cook said they would hope to help give Apple better understanding about not only the Chinese market, which is extremely important because, what, it's a population of approximately 1 billion people, and that means cha-ching, (laughs) cha-ching. But this allows them to also get data of how these cars are operating, running, optimized, what is working. Uh, Even let's talk about mobile payments in cars, uh, that exchange, and also the fact of the matter is that Apple is looking at a car themselves we know this right yeah so th- this is very interesting because uber and lyft are doing things where they're having um autonomous cars driving around picking up people so you can get in a car that has no driver right it's a little, i think there's one in in london's happening mm-hmm. and a couple other uh, other cities so um tim stevens sent out a tweet earlier this morning he's like you know what i've been thinking about this apple car thing and maybe the apple car is not going to be a car but it's just going to be a service just an autonomous riding service. And that would be very smart about that, you know, just to expand on that. The the end game for a lot of these car services is autonomous vehicles. Yeah. The reason why, unfortunately, us humans cost more money. We also create more mistakes. Yes. And therefore replacing us. This is like the first phase of our lives where we will most likely see some sort of autonomous computer controlled vehicle slash device that actually replaces human jobs. We've seen factories, of course, but this, this is kind of like the next level, right? She's going to be like, Siri, give me a car, please. And then she's going to like go, what? Okay. French again. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Get, get me a, and then that, a car. And then a car is going to drive up. You know what? You know what's funny about that? No that, driver. That, that was Siri in her, fi- in her finest form. Siri, get me a car. Okay. French. What? <laughs> No, she no. was calling me French again. Remember, that's my oh. nickname. Oh, that's, she, that's she knows oh, French again. Yeah, you're. Oh my God, we <laughs> forgot. I forgot you are the French again. French, I can. Yeah, she knows my name. 
So uh, they're investing $1 billion. This is not something Apple normally does. You don't hear them putting this much money into a market. Again, this is all for the data. I find this interesting from a standpoint of, look, Apple needs all the help they can get when it comes to this car, self-driving car, autonomous vehicle, their own car market. Um, but there's a lot of connections here, connective tissue here. We have Apple's CarPlay platform. We have the car, obviously. We have Apple Pay at work. And the biggest thing, the Chinese market. Getting a billion understanding, dollars, man. A, bi- a, bil- a, a billion population. Bi- yeah, a billion dollars for a billion, a billion population. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a dollar a that's head. A do- that's a dollar a Chinese Hey-o. person. Each Chinese person is worth a dollar in China. So <laughs> <laughs> we, will, we will see how this shakes out. Again, this is just very forward thinking. But this is another thing to kind of consider. What else is going around in this car market? Now, just at the end of April, just recently, Google, Ford, and Uber, and Lyft, and who else was it? Um, Volvo announced the formation of this self-driving coalition for safer streets. And what they're trying to do is really lay out rules that we can follow by the government that are kind of in place so we can start moving forward more aggressively with autonomous cars, autonomous vehicles, but just having those rules set in place to help push forward the movement. Again, those names, Google, Uber, Lyft, Volvo, Ford, they're all in cahoots. Oh, so hell yeah. They're all married together to see this happen. Guess who's not in that party? Apple. So Apple needs to figure out how they're going to be involved in something like this. What information do they need? So they're partnering with Chinese service. Can you do you want to try and say it, um, Stephen? Dudu Shuxin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was wrong. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Didi Chuxing. Didi Chuxing. There you go. You know, it's my my uh, my true Chinese friends and viewers and listeners are gonna be like, that was horrible. That <laughs> how dare Tong. You? That's wrong, Tong. How dare you, Tong? That's wrong, Tong. So we'll see how this um, all comes together. But it, I, th- I thought it was a fascinating story that Apple would actually drop $1 billion in cash um, to do this. So we'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Is it smart? Is it stupid? Is it really going to help Apple that much? 1-800-616-2638 is the phone number that you guys can call I'm us. Curious, I'm curious to know if, if a car drives up and no one's driving it that you called, would you get in? Well, I think there's going to be some sort of authentication with your phone to the car. Like a no, I mean, but would you trust to drive in an autonomous car? That's just... eventually you will. <sighs> it's it's Jet, right. This is Jetson status. Put your kids in there. This is Jetson okay, go status. Go to school, kids. An autonomous car that. is arguably already to this date, although there needs to be a lot more regulation and things that need to pass. Autonomous cars are currently the Google ones that are tested out, te- being tested, are safer than regular cars right now today. Oh, They've yeah, only had like one yeah. accident. There was the Tesla accident though too with the. Just like it's big news on uh, Roadshow yesterday that a Tesla car auto parked itself and it mm-hmm. went under a back of a semi because uh, the semi was like it was too high. Hanging, it was too yeah, high, it was right? Like, it was too ha- high. Had a over overhanging uh, equipment or something. So they're you know sensors. They got to work on those sensors. Got to work on those sensors. Uh, we will be talking about the Apple iPhone Seven blueprints. We will get to that, but there's still a little bit of news that is more current and more relevant to what's happening this week. So. Hold on to your panties, Periscope. Someone's like, blueprints, blueprints, blueprints. <laughs> I want to hear about the blueprints. I saw some blueprints. Just just calm down, okay? This one, Apple denies the iTunes streaming music shutdown. This is a report from Digital Music News that came out, I believe, was it yesterday or two days ago? Yeah, yesterday. Uh, it, was, it was, yeah, it was yesterday or two days ago. Um, according to their sources, check this out. Apple is planning on terminating music downloads from iTunes within two years. Ha! To within two years now this yeah, right. was this yeah right this is this is a thing where people are instantly like what what's gonna happen to my music collection what if i'm someone like right here me who buys music who wants to own their music how is that gonna change things do i like this do i not like this so what it comes down to at least in the story according to their sources is that a range of shutdown timetables are being considered by apple this is according to the digital music news one executive um, noted these are basically conversations this person uh, reportedly was privy to and then told Digital Music News over a phone call, not even via email. They didn't want any written record of this stuff because of the sensitivity of it. Um, The report says one executive noted that keeping iTunes music downloads running forever isn't really on the table anymore. Also under discussion is a plan to ride the iTunes music download offering out for the next three to four years, maybe longer, when paid music downloads are likely to be an afterthought in streaming in a streaming dominated industry we see how streaming has taken off apple has been late to the party but at the same time apple has been really successful 
just what in their first six months or so they they were able to lock down 13 million active subscribers That's of big. Apple Music with a projection of 20 million. Uh, I think sometime by I don't know if it was by the end of this year, uh, but I think yeah by the end of the year 20 million subs paying subscribers are expected by then. But just to give you an idea also of the numbers here that we're talking about with iTunes Music downloads. Now, current downloads are still estimated to be worth around $600 million in 2019. All right, this is forecasting. But that's a huge difference during its peak, right? When everyone was downloading and purchasing music, iTunes revenue brought in $3.9 billion. Wow. So billion. It, it went from 3.9 billion to what is it? To a projected 600, 600 million? million in 2019. Holy smokes. That's a huge drop. We know that streaming services are really filling that void replacing I know That's I feel like I feel like I'm one of the few people that doesn't have doesn't subscribe to a streaming service. Do, do I you like have Amazon music. Prime? Yeah, I do, but well, I don't use go. it. Okay. Apple Music or uh, Amazon Prime I know. Music baby. It's like <laughs> look, Amazon Prime is built it's into everything. it. It's yeah. canned into it, but it's not you know, integrated into the ecosystem the way that I like. It sort of is though. It like kind if of you is. get the app, if you get the Amazon Prime Music app, yes. it'll take it'll intake all your iTunes music. Which is all nice. Your stuff, which is cool. Which is know? nice. So it does it does work. It's always that whole thing of like, okay, do I want to give not give, but have all my music then transfer to another app i know I you know. know it's it's a pain it i'm a pain. i'm sorry i'm still old school but if like you want to stream you know if you want to stream new stuff that amazon prime has then there then the app is the, that's the way to do it if you don't have like spotify or something like that and i get the whole debate trust me but i just at the end of the day am i going if i stop how about this everyone will argue that you will never stop subscribing to a music music subscription once you do it and i say yes you're right and you can have this entire library of music accessible to you at any time. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. But then it also can go away. But that's also so much. I don't know. Yeah, it can go away. It, it, can, it, <laughs> it can go away. At the same time, maybe I should just stop being an old futz and just, in addition to buying my music, just subscribe as well. In yeah. fact, I think I'm going to start a Kickstarter. Well, I'm going to so start options. a GoFundMe. I'm going to start a GoFundMe. Pay for Brian Tong's <laughs> Apple Music subscription. I mean, there's so many different ways to get music now. There YouTube, is. uh, you know, it's uh, music is everywhere. So I see why their numbers are dipping. It totally makes sense. It totally makes sense. Now again, Apple offered a rare response to this report um, regarding the iTunes download uh, shutdown. They let me see if I can find the actual quote from Apple. Um, oh, here they go. In re response to the article, they said it is not true. We are not shutting down iTunes downloads per your story yesterday. This is according to media executive Tom <laughs> Newmar. Yeah, he didn't say in two years or in three years. He just said we're not shutting iTunes downloads Today. per your story. Today. <laughs> Today. The Periscope looks like it's flipping out, so I don't know if it's still working or not, but it's like blinking and doing weird things to me right now. Uh-oh. There's oh, an update well. going on. It's okay. It's fine. People that are listening two days later really don't care. In fact, if we talk about Periscope too much... Let me know. No, Periscope is cool because they're going to start archiving videos finally. So, That's true. So you do the hashtag these, save on it. Yeah, all these beautiful Apple Byte will be <laughs> archived. YouTubers, you can roll your eyes. You're like, you guys, get to the get, get going. Get with the show. <laughs> all right. Um, I do want to follow up on one more iTunes thing before we get to the iPhone 7 blueprints that <coughs> some Hell. of you are waiting so oh. anxiously for. We talked about that iTunes issue where a blog post described how um, – a gentleman's pretty much entire music collection was deleted or he believed was deleted. There's a lot of back and forth. Um, so there's a report that are saying, look, it didn't delete them. You might have made a different selection when choosing to either remove the music from the cloud or delete your song entirely. But Serenity Caldwell from IMOR did this really great article that digs into it and really kind of gets to what might be the root of the problem. And it looks like it could be an iTunes bug, not Apple Music, that may be to blame for the disappearing music libraries. Now, that doesn't make anyone feel better about this, right? Well, a little bit. It makes me a little feel bit. a little I better. I mean, That's like a it wasn't a deliberate. Fixed. Yeah, it is. Well, <laughs> let's hope it can be fixed because here, here, here's the thing about the bug. Um, based on multiple support threads, it appears that a recent version of iTunes 12.3.3, okay, this was at some point after March 21st, the update 
affected a small amount of people. And here's some of the conditions that may have been in place that caused this. First of all, you subscribe to Apple Music. At some point, you updated to iTunes 12.3.3. Um, not only was it uh, our gentleman, was it our friend, uh, I forgot his first name, Mr. Pinkstone, and then another designer, Robert Etrop- Etropolsky, said that their collection also disappeared. The update appears to have wiped parts of their music library due to a database error because Apple Music had already uploaded and matched their collection, and it still presented the user a complete library, but then when they clicked on it, it ended up downloading the cloud-stored version of that song, which is not the original version, and it is a more compressed version, and then their native original version went missing. So it could be a bug. It's not affecting everybody. It is affecting a few people. Moral of the story, like we said last week, back up your collection, collections, everything you have. Oh, yeah. Uh, and if you are using Apple Music, I'm st- although it kind of cripples some of the features, I still, like I recommended, turn off the iCloud Music Library function, um, and at least you'll be able to stream music but not use it in the same way that you can where you can access it all the time. So, um you know, I just wanted to do a follow up to let you guys know we don't leave we didn't want to just leave it hanging there. What happened to that thing? It looks like it might be a bug. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're saying thank God. A bug that they can fix that did not affect you. I got lucky. <laughs> this arrived. No, I still did have, I did have some problems like you try to launch you know, we talked about it last week. You try to launch the Apple, the iPod app, and it and it like takes a while. You know, it's like thinking like it needs a connection or something. Of course, of course, it, it takes a while. Okay, yeah. let's uh, get on to more the the moment you have all been waiting for oh. the new iPhone seven and seven plus drawings. This these are based on Blueprint CAD drawings that were released by On Leaks Online, who have had a pretty reputable um history. And you can scroll down on that beach. I'm just to show people. They were posted on U-Switch, and what they show off are two iPhones, the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus. According to the report, these are blueprints from as as recently as January of this year that show the two mo- phone models. Now, if you've been following us, reports have said that there might actually be three different phones, an iPhone 7, an iPhone 7 Plus, and an iPhone 7 Pro. And the rumors were, I was like, dude, Apple, you are not making Let's three not phones. That, that is the stupidest <laughs> thing you could ever do. Then... Um, the Plus would have like the snazzy dual lens camera, uh, the smart connector on the back that's you can find on the iPad. But what happened now is that these blueprints um, and other reports are kind of following and connecting to it are now saying that Apple will not release three phones. In fact, they're going to release a iPhone 7, which is pretty much you know a semi-redesign, a faster processor. But the iPhone 7 Plus, the 5.5-inch screen model, is the one that will get the dual lens camera and will also get the uh, smart connector. So again, though, this is still an issue to me that they are still making, now they're making two phones at two different sizes with two different feature sets. And two different, and camera, and different cameras. Different cameras. Uh, the lens is allegedly going to still be protruding from the surface. It won't have that metal ring that we're used to, but it will still protrude somewhat. Nipple. Nipple. We got the iPhone nipple. <laughs> but again, look, when I see this now, even if this camera is hot sauce, I am not a 5.5-inch screen person. No. Personally, I am completely not that guy, although I do have big hands. I oh, We, we did confirm this, actually. My hands are larger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> I think you had them lower. lower uh, no. You, know, you had your hand up higher wait, than wait, mine. Wait, wait. Beecham, do you really want to do this again or not? No, I don't. You, you want to walk away. You want to walk away from this fight. You want to walk away from this dog fight, okay? <laughs> but again, this is like, I feel like Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me I have small hands. Okay, hey, that, that's, on, a, that's a personal problem. iPhone 7, three cameras. <laughs> <laughs> iPhone 7, three cameras. Uh, but again, different. This would not entice me to upgrade to a 5.5 inch screen no. which means i'm going to tell you right now unless it has some killer feature that i need to have just from a review standpoint i would lean towards at this moment probably not needing to upgrade the iphone there was although i cover the iphone all the time there was one year i think it was the 5 to the 5s i did not upgrade my phone because it, it was just like a little slightly better camera yeah at that time uh I went to the six of the success because I thought 3D touch was amazing, which it is, but it's being underutilized. So it is success to the seven, and you're telling me I have to get the 5.5 inch screen? It's too big for that. Uncomfortable. It's hard to hold. We'll see. 
<laughs> but that is not compelling at all. I'll but it's tell you, gonna what, be like a Lytro camera. No, with the three uh, who, cameras. Who knows? It only has. It's only have two. You know, you might get uh, a with depth. You might be able to do some thing. level. Yeah. In uh, what is it? The deep focus thing. Deep focus. That might be kinda cool. You'll you'll have better. You can have one that is. Um, you'll have a wider range. One could be uh, deal with lighting. You know, lower low light levels better, and it will kind of like combine the attributes of both cameras together it won't they won't be exactly the same lens in each camera they'll be able to do different things like maybe a macro lens there's a feature where they were talking about how you could take a picture and then click on what a zoomed version of it would look like versus a wide version of it in one move i mean we'll see what happens we'll see how they actually use this we don't know yet vr just kidding you know vr apple <laughs> apple, apple ain't not a vr they're, they're way behind there but i'm not hating i'm just stating a fact Okay, this is so. If you're not excited about the iPhone Seven, which I, I, it really just like kind of breaks my heart when I see that. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm definitely gonna wait. Look, 2017 is the tenth anniversary of the iPhone, and if you're telling me that Apple is not gonna go big and go large, oh yeah, on the tenth anniversary of the iPhone, they are going to do something special. I feel like they have to do something special, especially since what we've seen up to this point is. Just not very special. So according to John Gruber, he's uh, covered Apple forever. Uh, he's an Apple blogger. He has this podcast called The Talk Show. Um, it doesn't have as high star ratings as the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy for the record. Oh, yeah. but <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> no, it's honestly not even close. <laughs> but I will show him love because he does have a podcast. Uh, in his podcast, he talks about how he's heard rumors and scuttlebutt from inside sources that the 2017 10th anniversary edition iPhone will include an edge-to-edge display that eliminates the top and bottom bezel. So those that what we call like the forehead and the chin, those big black lines on the iPhone, those will be completely gone. There will be a front-facing camera, touch ID, and the sensors will all be hidden under the display. Hey, is that what this video is? Right this here? video is like kind of a rough concept idea of what it might look like. And don't look at the back of this. It's just someone's that render. But horrible. The back looks horrible. But the front is cool because it was edge to edge. It is nice. Now, there's a few things that line up with this idea. Apple is rumored and reported. Not even rumored. It's reported that they made a deal with Samsung for OLED display screens. Uh, flexible OLEDs can wrap to the edges. We've seen that with Samsung already. So 2017, is that that's in place already. Okay. So that component is in place. We've already seen technology from LG that exists that a, a, a touchscreen sensor without a physical button is going to be available. So that tech is already out there, and Apple's most likely working on it. Um, and Apple has patents for that they've applied for for using your fingerprint through a touchscreen panel without any physical button. So you at least see the, some of these. That looks like the Apple Watch right there. Yeah, it does. But you see some of these breadcrumbs that lead to the fact that they can do this. It's just a matter of, will we see this in 2017? But that would at least be a design that makes you go, huh? Mm. I would be happy to get rid of the home button because, you know, mm. my kids get my phone and they, like, mess up the home button. So then are you going to lock out your kids from your phone and not give them access to your, their like, you're going to give them no code and no fingerprint access? No. Just, see, I that's what not. I thought. <laughs> that's what that's. <laughs> so you are, they are still going to be able to use your phone. They'll be able to. I have to unlock it for them. <laughs> okay. But dad, just, dad I think it's cool the... not having the button because, you know, my son will have like peanut butter and like push the <laughs> button. I'm like, oh, you got peanut butter in my home button, buddy. So, uh, yeah, that'll solve that problem. Thanks, I, Apple. The thing about what you just described is that that I feel that that affects me as an adult. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it affects everybody. N- not just children with peanut butter, but what about <laughs> me with peanut butter on my finger? What about you with jelly? I mean, everything. You can get peanut. jelly, peanut butter in there. Peanut butter. <laughs> what is it? Peanut butter. What's that song? Oh, wait. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly, and jelly, and jelly. You know that song? Peanut, peanut I don't know butter, that song. and jelly. Someone's going to be like, yo, I know that song. That's my Send childhood. Us Send us a link. <laughs> Send us a link. Send us a link. All right. Um, right. Let's jump over to Siri. Siri uh, has improved over time. It's getting better. I, th- I feel it's a lot better. It's still not the best, but don't you think it's a lot better, Beach? Yeah, yeah, Siri is definitely a lot better, a lot more helpful, and she's not any faster though. Agreed. It's it's not as fast as Google Google Voice. Oh yeah, Google and Voice. Cortana is actually pretty darn smart. But this is a cool story from the Washington Post. Uh, the creators of Siri, who sold it to Apple, Apple acquired um, that technology. 
have now created their kind of next generation or the next evolution of Siri, where they call Viv, the oh, yeah. self-coding assistant. Now, Viv is tight, okay? You guys and gals, if you haven't seen anything like this, you need to look up Viv. Uh, they showed off a demo at New York's Disrupt. Just look up on like YouTube, Viv Disrupt New York. And what it is, it's think of it, we do queries for Siri, like what's the temperature today? But Viv is able to, on the fly, do multiple layers of this using third-party plugins as well as the technology itself. So, for example, instead of saying what's the weather on Thursday, they did an example like what was the weather two weeks ago at 5 o'clock? Did it hit 70 degrees? That's like, pretty cool. Multi-layers. But then let's take this beyond just like weather, right? They're able to show off things like I like to book a fancy hotel room on Labor Day weekend in this city for three nights. And then it, through their partnership with Hotels.com, it popped up options for basically like deluxe hotels on those days. And instead of having to like select multiple prompts through the, an app, you could just basically say yes or no. or That's even awesome. Or ordering a pizza. What was crazy is ordering a pizza, pulling the data and options from something like a Grubhub, and you being able to be like, add pepperoni, uh, take pepperoni off, add pineapples, put extra cheese as it's going on through your voice purely, and then it orders you that pizza and it's delivered to your door. Like it actually is a live working product that has has been working for them. That's awesome. So I, yeah, I don't like to talk to people a lot, you know, so <laughs> I could just talk to my phone and be get, get detailed and granular. That'd be killer. But it, it was very, it's very detailed. It's worth checking out. I thought it was pretty slick. Can you ask it stuff like, uh, do I need to wear a jacket today? I think Siri asks answers questions like that too. Yeah, but right? that's I mean that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, sure, it's forty degrees. Put on a jacket. <laughs> like, thanks Siri. You know, like I could actually open the weather app and look at the temperature and decide if I need a jacket faster than probably Siri can answer that. We yeah. should actually have a test. Yeah. We should do something you like that. You want to do that. it right now? Let's try it. I don't know. It's going to take too long. Okay. You look at your phone. Well, I can't look weather. at my phone. It's periscoping, dude. Oh, okay. Or it's like crash <laughs> periscoping. I don't even know if it's working right now. I can't see any. It's just blinking all the time. It's probably crashing. Okay. Next time. Next time. We'll do a test. Okay. Thank you, French again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just to wrap this up, before we hit the phone calls, my new favorite thing. Have you checked the G board out, Beecham? Have you checked out Gboard, the new Google keyboard specifically for iOS? I have not, but I watched Holy the CNN update. Holy crap. It looked very interesting. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, my, can I, may I argue to say this is a game changer? Is it? I've been using it. I've been getting used to it. It does take a little time to get used to, but I don't know. For those of you that use text messaging on your iPhone natively, you have that bar that shows like the predictive text of words that you're able to write. Now, this G key, Gboard keyboard is an app that you can download for free and then you have to install it as a keyboard and give it full access, which is great. But what it allows you to do is a little G logo pops up where that line of predictive text is and it allows you to directly from your keyboard, my friend, okay, I it has built-in search. That's like built-in cool. Google search that shows results and fields. Awesome. You can obviously do weather. Um, okay, this was a fun one. Some people might think this is annoying. When I type in words, it has predictive emojis. So yeah. if I say like, when did you did you lose your key? The key emoji shows up as an option, okay? How oh, tight is man. that? Okay, that's fun. You can turn all this stuff off. It also has what they call glide typing, which is basically like the swipe keyboard. This is all integrated on one keyboard that you can use on iOS. I'm not a fan of glide typing stuff. Well, you Sorry. don't have to use it, though, my friend. Okay, good. I'm just saying it's an option, okay? I'm just saying it's an option. Then also, hello, GIF or GIF. <laughs> Searching is built directly into the keyboard. It's just like so important because okay, we this everything. The, we don't we don't have emotions anymore. Yes, we have GIF motions, man. <laughs> it's like we don't we don't know how to express ourselves anymore because we're so uncomfortable doing it. We'll let it. We'll let a video do it for me. Okay, we'll do a, a five second clip. will enable you to know how I feel now. This is cool. You can customize it too. Yeah, you can Auto customize caps. turning off those things that you want or don't want. I I'm like telling they, you. I like how they turned off block offensive words and like everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you guys want to just – guys and gals want to play with the new keyboard, try the Gboard. I want to know how you feel about it. I've been using it now for, what, three or four days? Wait, it didn't wait, make can you explain to me? Is it an app in the App Store? Yeah, so, okay, when you install any keyboard on your phone, oh, yeah, okay. you have to – it's basically like an app you download first, and then you 
go into your settings, yeah, general, you then keyboard. It. You add the keyboard. There's an option that says allow full access, and then you can do it. So, like, I have um, Bitmoji. <laughs> hey, were you ever on the Bitmoji train? I don't. I don't think so. It's annoying when you have friends that all they do is use Bitmojis. I'm like, you're a loser. Like, I don't. <laughs> I do. I'll drop a Bitmoji on someone like once a week at the most. But I ain't like. You know, you got people that are like every line is like when they're happy or can't wait to see you or you to man. It's like all bit mode. I'm like, this is disturbing, man. This is stupid. So but- it's like, okay. So on my phone, I have like a little emoji keyboard. Would there be a, another button next to that? That's the little Google. So you Google keep on keyboard. pressing that global key to change the keyboard and it'll end up on the G board. Oh, I see. Okay. Cool. And then you, by leaving it there, it's kind of like the default. Yeah. I'm just saying, try it. Uh, how about this beach? Get it. And the next week show, I want to know how you, what you feel. Like okay. how you like it because I got some homework. Cool. It takes yeah, it takes a little time to get used to. We want to know what you guys and gals think about the G board as well. I, I think it's freaking boss. I might get tired of it, but I still think it's really good. If there's search there, because I'm, I'm constantly leaving, you know, I'll leave like a chat app to go search for something. That's what I'm talking link, about. And now I don't have to do that. So, that's dude, it, you problems. can throw a map. Like, let's say you want to go to a restaurant, you type in the restaurant, you hit there, and you can send them the direct map direction, and they just click on it and go to it. Booyah. You don't leave the app at all. Booyah. Booyah. Gboard, <laughs> keyboard. What's up? That's cool. Okay. Shall we um get to the calls? Yeah, do people yeah, are people what... do people like the Gboard keyboard? I don't know. We'll see what they say. Let's see. Um hang on. My computer just decided to freeze. Oh, that's right cool. Right at the uh, very key moment here. Give me a second. The, the like the most definitive moment yeah, that right could the... possibly This is the time I get to shine when I play the voicemails. All right. I'm I'm seeing here. I love Gboard. Why isn't there a Google extra crunchy? Because someone's right. Because Apple greater than Google. No. No. We're talking about it, right? We're in talks, maybe. Lack shit, Kyra Paul's all. Oh my God, Brian, you're just wasting time here. Is there anything important to discuss? We're talking about real stuff here. All right, I got the I got the voicemails. Okay, okay let's get to it. First one is from Artel in Indianapolis. Thank you for calling. Oops. What is happening? I screwed it up, Brian. You did not. Just well, hang tight. I'm I'm listening. I think they got deleted on accident. The <gasps> computer, when the computer just froze on me, oh I think everything gosh. got screwed up. Okay, so if I remember off the top of my head, I believe Artel in Indianapolis, he asked us, "Is the um, nine point? What, what are my thoughts on the 9.7-inch iPad Pro, right? Uh, yes, that is correct. And so I'm sorry we can't hear the voicemail, but I will tell you that I actually, as someone who has an iPad in the past, if you have like a 2 an air. Oh, an I got it fixed. New... I fixed it. I okay. fixed it. Let's hear. Let's hear. Sorry, Artel. guys. I found him. All right, here we go. Hey, Brian and Stephen. This is Artel from Indianapolis. I was wondering if you could give me some information on your show if you get to my question about the new Apple TV offering 4K video um, with some type of 4K streaming service through Apple. I was wondering about this because, like I said before, I am not buying the Apple TV unless it has 4K. Thank you very much for your help, and I love you guys' show. Have a great day. Bye-bye. See, I'm glad we had Artel's actual yes. voicemail because I confused him with another call. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Artel, we love you too, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening and being a part of the show. Uh, first of all, the app, the current Apple TV has an A8 processor. Uh, based on those requirements, at least the way that Apple poses it, you are. It is not able to stream any 4K Ultra HD content as of now, and so really. Until they either lift that requirement, the fact of the matter is that you're probably going to have to wait for the next Apple TV, whenever that is, whether it's in a year or so, for them to give us the 4K ability. It was one of my major complaints about the product because we have iPhones that record 4K. 4K I'm going to put my two quotation marks around it. We have iPhones that record 4K video. How awesome would it be for us to stream directly from our iPhone through our Apple TV, 4K video on our TV. That's just a logical, like, ecosystem, fun, cool thing. But we can't yeah. because they put an A8 processor in there. So right now, the answer is no. If you that's really your deciding factor and what's important, don't do it right now and just wait till the next one. And uh, I gave it a bad apple before. So it's now it's when it when it's the badness has lasted so long, I, I'm kind of leaning more towards sad apple. Here, here's a here's a bad apple for you.
Okay, that's a bad. No, apple. That's a, that's a bad apple. <laughs> that's <a> scary apple. <laughs> All right, next call. Okay, next call is from Keegan in Canada, Alberta. He says the country backwards and then the state. So let's see. Hi, Brian and Stephen. My name's Keegan. I'm calling from Canada, Alberta, um, and uh, I just wanted to ask you guys what your opinion was on the iPad Pro 9.7. Um, and more importantly, if you know if there's a way to exchange a 32 gigabyte version for the 128 gigabyte version. Unfortunately, I thought I had enough space and I just don't. Thanks so much. Love the podcast. You guys have such phenomenal banter. Have yourself a great day. All right. All right. So let me tell you this, my friend. I do like. I actually like the iPad Pro. First of all, the 12.9-inch iPad Pro, I love. What I don't love about it is Apple, four months later, put that freaking True Tone display in the 9.7 <laughs> and left me just like, what the hell? What? <laughs> Why would you do that? I still love my iPad Pro 12.9. I use it all the time. I read comics all the time. I, It's not worth – okay, how about this? Um, if you don't read comics, you don't watch movies, and you're not traveling a lot, the 12.9-inch may not make sense for you. <laughs> Because it's expensive. Um, and I yes, I did buy it myself. The 9.7-inch, great iPad if you're someone who's owned an earlier one and has always been looking to upgrade and has just been like, man, this is good enough. This is more than good enough. And it's been years and you still want to get one. I actually feel comfortable with recommending it if you really want to upgrade. But if you don't really care about the True Tone display and all your apps are running fine, like most people are, you still don't really need to upgrade it. Yeah. Andre uh, in the in the YouTube chat says iPad iPad Pro needs OS X. Well, iPad Pro needs an iOS X. They need an iOS X. <laughs> I, I they they need they need iOS X. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Canada has provinces, not states. My apologies, Canada. We, you you mispronounced their name also just yeah. just then. I like to call it Canada. You're such a jerk. <laughs> not only do they not have states, you also. Miss, no, it's miss, Canada. A, a, a. So yeah, lo, lo, oh, also as in, uh, for your fact of returning that, if you bought it within fifteen days of Apple's return policy, fifteen, <laughs> fifteen days, baby, uh, you can return it. Uh, they will not charge a restocking fee, and then you could upgrade that. If you're maybe within a month, you can get on your knees and beg and kiss their feet, and maybe tell them how many. Apple products you've bought in the past. I always like to use this against them. I buy Apple Care all the time on all my stuff. So I always like, if I have some issue, I'm like, dude, I buy Apple Care on all my products. You can check. And they're like, okay, okay, we'll take care of you. <laughs> and then I'm like, by the way, wink, wink. you might recognize me from such shows as. And they're like, no, we don't recognize you at all, sir. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to talk about this on my show. <laughs> Damn it, I'm leaving. I'm going to find another Apple store that will. <laughs> okay, so the... <laughs> There you go. Someone's like I. Someone in the chat room's like I O I O sex. <laughs> we are good, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. That is the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy. Always keeping it munchy. We will be back next week, same time, same bad channel, with more news, your calls, all the good stuff. Beachum, tell everybody goodbye. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. Peace.